Hello and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the 15th in a 10-part video series in which we're learning how to automate using vRealize Orchestrator. If you haven't already seen videos 13 and 14, you should go back and look at those. Anyways, in this video, we're going to be looking at the first of four videos in which we're going to be talking about various branching techniques that you'll be using within your vRealize Orchestrator workflows. So let's jump in. Now, as you can see here illustrated in this sample workflow schema, the workflows that you've been developing so far are pretty boring because they can only go one direction. Uh, in workflow schemas, like we see here, the blue arrow indicates the normal path to go through a workflow schema. And in this case, there's only one way you can go. You start at the start element over on the left side. You follow the first blue arrow. You go to a boring schema element. Then you follow the next blue arrow and so on and so on, following the blue normal path arrows till you get to the end of the workflow, which eh, that can be useful, but it's kind of boring. What you will quickly want to do once you start creating orchestrator workflows is to be able to branch different ways in your workflows, such as you see illustrated here. So in this particular example, you see a, a schema element called a basic decision. Actually, it's not called a basic decision. I call it basic decision. For whatever reason, the uh, VRO developers just call this a decision. But since there are multiple types of decision schema elements, I'm going to call this one the basic decision. We'll talk about it in the next video. But whether you're using a basic decision like you see me using here in this workflow, or a custom decision, or a decision activity, any of those schema elements, they all show up with the, the diamond-shaped icons, but all three of those decision type schema elements allow your workflow to branch off in different directions. So now instead of having a single direction that this workflow can go, it can actually go to two different directions. So again, looking at this workflow, we start off with a start schema element. That's where our workflow starts. We follow the blue normal path arrow, and then we encounter the decision element. Now, inside of this decision, we're going to define some sort of test to be performed. And depending upon the outcome of that test, we're either going to go down the green path. Uh, that's sometimes called the true path or sometimes called the success path. Uh, alternatively, if the test in the decision element fails, we'll go down the red path, also known as the false path, also known as the failure path. So we have a, a green path and a red path also known as the true path and the false paths, also known as the success paths and the failure paths. Whatever you want to call them, our workflow now has two different directions it can go, which is going to allow us to do more interesting things in our workflows. So there are in Orchestrator multiple ways that you can do branching. I just showed you one. But to start off with here on this slide, notice that within the JavaScript code that you write within your Orchestrator workflows, you can create JavaScript code that branches off in different directions. You can do that branching using the classic if-then construct, or as I'm illustrating here in the screenshot, the classic if-then-else construct. Or uh, don't worry if you don't know about this one yet, but there's another really useful JavaScript um, branching element called a branching construct called switch. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. But all of these, if you want to use them, are available to you within your scriptable tasks and other places where you define JavaScript code. Now, please be aware that when you use these JavaScript if then type constructs, um, if you use any of the JavaScript constructs, the branching that's going to take place is only going to take place within the scriptable task. There's no way within the script, a scriptable task to use if then, if then else, switch, or anything like that. There's no way within the scriptable task to tell your workflow to go different directions. The JavaScript constructs, when you use them in a scriptable task, only do branching within that scriptable task, or that action, or, or other places where you use JavaScript code. This is not a video series in JavaScript. Uh, I've already provided you information back in video number 13. Again, if you haven't seen video 13, go back. In video number 13, I provided you some um, JavaScript resources where you can go to learn about these JavaScript branching constructs. In addition to the branching constructs that JavaScript provides, VRO provides a number of different branching schema elements such as the basic decision that I showed you in the previous video, 
along with others called custom decision and decision activity, you'll notice that for both of those, the icon looks exactly the same. I'm not certain why the orchestrated developers have chosen to have two identical uh, schema element icons, but don't worry, later on, uh, not in the next video, but in the following two videos after that, I'll show you not just how to use the custom and decision activity elements, but I'll also show you how to distinguish between one versus another within your workflows. And then the fourth schema element that Orchestrator provides to allow you to do branching is a fancy one called a switch. We'll be talking about that several videos from here. So you'll recall I said in the previous slide that there are various branching constructs within vRealize, excuse me, within JavaScript. So the JavaScript language itself uh, provides if then, if then else, switch statement, things like that. And in order to learn how to use those, I suggest if you don't already know how to do those in JavaScript that you go take a look at one of the resources I mentioned in video number 13, specifically a website called w3schools.com. If you go to w3schools.com slash js, you'll find a whole bunch of information about JavaScript. Over on the left side of the screen, you'll see entries for things like JS booleans, JS comparisons, JS conditions, JS switch, JS assignments. Those five different sections, you're going to want to go over to w3schools.com and read about those five different um, sections of the reference information. It will help you specifically to be able to do the JavaScript constructs that I mentioned in this slide. So one last thing in this video, again, this is just an overview video. In the next videos, we're gonna go into how you actually use these. But one other thing I wanted to make certain that you know right from the start, we already saw a slide very similar to this, a screenshot that looked uh, pretty much like this. We talked about the blue arrow. Again, that's the normal path through a workflow. We talked about the green path. Again, that's also called the truth path or the success path. And the red path, also known as false, also known as failure. Whatever you wanna call those paths, the crucial thing that I want to make certain that you know at the tail end of this video here is that there is another arrow that's going to show up that's totally irrelevant for our purposes right now. We'll talk about this arrow later on in this video series, but every now and then you're going to see another arrow that looks exactly like the arrow um, that's the red arrow from a decision. What this here arrow is, is it's called an exception path. And we'll talk later on in much more detail about what the exception path is, but essentially the exception path arrow is used to say, if anything goes wrong with the schema element at the front end of the exception path arrow, if anything goes wrong in here, then we want the orchestrator workflow engine to disregard any uh, other arrows, don't go down the blue arrow path, and instead go down this exception path to go to the schema element it points to, or there may be multiple, go to the schema element that the exception path arrow points to and do whatever that schema element says to do. Uh, once upon a time, years and years ago, uh, Orchestrator had two different red arrows. You could tell one from another. I don't know why. I asked years ago why they switch it and um, never got an answer to why they switched it. And so the situation is as it has been for several years now, which is that the arrows look identical. So you need to know how to distinguish between the red failure path of a decision element versus the red exception path. Now, the easy way to tell this difference between these, even though they're identical, the easy way to tell the difference between them is that if there's a red arrow coming out of a diamond shaped icon, in other words, if there's a red arrow coming out of a basic decision, a custom decision, or a decision activity, red arrows coming out of diamond shaped icons are the false path, the failure path of a decision. Any other schema element that you see a red arrow popping out of is an exception path. So. Red arrow from a diamond icon means false path of a decision. Red arrow out of any other type of schema element is an exception path. But again, we'll talk about exception paths later on in this video series. Next up in this video series is, we're gonna talk about the basic decision. So 
See you over in the next video. Uh, by the way, if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, but I'll see you over in video number 16.